Terraforming Mars is a popular idea spread further by my boy, Elon Musk. The objective of a terraforming operation is to make it so that Mars can support human life and animal life without the need for external oxygen or protective equipment. In short, it is making Mars Earth-like so that we can have a second home if the Earth is ever in danger of destruction. However, what Elon does not go into much depth on is how humanity can terraform Mars to make it habitable. In this video, we will go through how humanity can possibly terraform the red planet to make it green. To understand how we can do so, we need to understand why Mars is so deadly to humans and other animals. First, it is very cold. It has an average temperature of negative 60 degrees Celsius. Second, the atmosphere is not very thick on Mars, at about 1% the atmospheric pressure of Earth at sea level, meaning that your blood will boil if you step outside without a pressurized spacesuit. Third, the atmosphere is made up of different elements from Earth. Mars's atmosphere is made up of 96% carbon dioxide, while Earth's is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. Finally, Mars has no magnetosphere to protect it from radiation. The first thing we can do to terraform Mars is we can begin heating the atmosphere and introducing water vapor into it by deploying large mirrors to orbit around the red planet and to focus the sun's rays on the poles. This will release the water and carbon dioxide in the poles and will thus increase the temperature and atmospheric pressure of the red planet. Then, we can introduce extremophile microorganisms that are able to convert the carbon dioxide in Mars's atmosphere into breathable oxygen and also they will create nitrogen on the side. But more CO2 than this is needed. In fact, we will need to induce a state of global warming on Mars in order to get it to truly warm up. As such, we can import more carbon dioxide from Venus, which is rich in carbon dioxide. Since there is more matter in Mars's atmosphere, there will now be a higher atmospheric pressure on the red planet. However, we also have to make a magnetosphere for Mars in order to ensure that future settlers do not die of radiation. We can create an artificial magnetic field around Mars by placing underground gigantic superconducting rings around the planet. Assuming that humanity starts in the early 22nd century, doing all of this will lead us to the mid 23rd century. At this point, Mars is now shielded from radiation, has a decent amount of atmospheric pressure, and is warm enough so that slightly more complicated life forms are able to survive on the red planet. The next step will be to bring water into the red planet. This can be done by redirecting water-rich asteroids into Mars slowly so that there is no destruction of human settlements. This will ensure that there are oceans and lakes for ecosystems to later develop in. After we gather enough water on Mars, we can grow lichen and mosses, which are able to withstand harsh conditions to further conduct photosynthesis on Mars. As time passes, we can grow more types of photosynthetic organisms. Then, once there's enough oxygen in the air, we can introduce animals and other oxygen-breathing organisms onto the red planet. Then, once the atmosphere is altered to a sufficient amount, we can bring completely biological human beings and have them survive the red planet. I believe that this will all be complete by the early 26th century, a 500 year process. By that point, however, completely biological humans will be a minority as most of humanity will have chosen to adopt robotic bodies or our cyborgs, a topic you can learn about more in my mind uploading video. However, there is one shortcoming with this type of terraforming. The gravity will still remain at around 38% of Earth's gravity. This means that humans and other organisms introduced to Mars will have to be genetically engineered to survive in this low gravity environment. This means that the biology in Mars will be radically different from that of Earth because organisms are genetically modified to survive in low gravity. I would like to thank the website futuretimeline.net for helping me create this video. Not only did it serve as my main research tool for Mars terraforming methods, but it has also inspired an interest in futurology in me that remains to this day. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, joining our Discord server, 
and becoming a Patreon. Likewise, please watch either Why the Smallest Aliens Are the Deadliest or the Coronavirus Homelessness Crisis. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.